Yasser's told me to speed it up. <laughs> and he tells me that we only, or I only have minus four minutes to do this. So we're going to go a little bit. First, I want to give you an idea of um, how I'm structuring this. I've got three slides with a lot of meat, and it's going to take me an hour and a half to get through those. Um, they're all about the Green Energy Act and how we got there. Then I've got uh, several slides with two si types of perspective. One's a 20-year perspective and one's a five-year perspective. And then um, I go to a section that, that um, talks about how we get there, how we go from point A to B and, and our role as citizens in um, instructing government and guiding government. And, and because I'm not a very experienced public speaker, I think like many that you've experienced, um, my talk is going to ramble and grind to an incoherent end. So what I've done to, 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 to cue you on that is, uh, as a matter of fact, I forgot a conclusion. So we've got to work without the fact that I don't have a conclusion on this, but I do have a slide that'll help. Look, look for the thank you slide. That's the, the key for thunderous applause and you can bolt to the washroom. So here goes. The Green Energy Act is, in fact, a revolution that, that started a long time ago. Um, I, I experienced it in Ontario in um, 1995 with the Royal Commission on, on the Energy Restructuring that was done by, or commissioned by, um, Donald McDonald, former MP. And he issued that white paper in 1996, and then the first steps in energy restructuring happened under a prior government in May of 2002 when the, uh, the energy market became uh, fragmented into pieces and th there was an opportunity to, to uh, bid into a, a competitive market. But the steps since 2002 essentially have been timid steps up until two years ago. And uh, I'm here to talk about the effect of, of a game change in the market and what it's been like to be in that. Um, that's a qualifying factor. You should know that in, in uh, North American markets, uh, energy procurement, to the extent that it is done in a market, a competitive market way, is done through competitive bidding processes. And uh, that's tended to favor or enhance the prospects of major or large corporate entities that have the, the uh, physical and financial capacity and resources to be, be in those markets. Um, it, it really has changed now, and I want to go through the, the next two slides are the meat talking about what's changed. Um, this usually takes an hour and a half, so let's go through this. Um, uh, there's no particular order of importance, but I would look at the second one right now because I think it's, it's key. The pricing methodology has changed. Instead of a competitive bid process, we are now using something called a feed-in tariff, which is an idea imported from the Europeans. They've been using feed-in tariffs for 15 or actually more than 15 years now, very successfully. What, a what it means is if you, I if you build your energy facility, you have a price. You're going to get on, you're going to get to sell the, the power, which really lowers the, the, the risk parameter for the energy developer. Uh, coming back to the first one, um, energy or conservation and renewable is, an, is a major priority now in the, the way we structure the energy markets. Um, when a developer, I'm going to the third one now, when a developer decides to bring his product, the energy uh, facility, to the market, he's treated with a warm and friendly face for the first time in his life. Uh, this is quite an experience that's quite different. Uh, the renewable creature, the tree-hugging wind hippie, as we used to be called 15 or 20 years ago, they were never considered uh, a desirable member of the energy community. They were always a little bit weird. But now they're, they're in definitely in, in, uh, in favor. Um, also, what's different is the, the scale has changed. In, in traditional uh, regulated or even deregulated uh, market, uh, energy markets, um, it was big. Big is always better. Big is what got the, the lowest cost dollar or the lowest cost kilowatt hour delivered to the customer. 
Well, that paradigm didn't turn out to be true because we proved that in, in my days of Ontario Hydro 30 years ago or 25 years ago, we proved how, how big can go awfully wrong with some of the, uh, some of the boondoggle nuclears that, that this province created. So now we're allowed to do small and big or medium. Regulations changed. There is still a regulating process. The Ontario Energy Board does exist. It is there to ensure that, that uh, uh, there's order and, and not chaos in the, the energy markets. But it has a new mission. It now must promote renewables, conservation, and smart grid implementation. And the, the, the tie line to that is it's look after the province economically. Make economic stimulus happen. Make sure it's sustainable. Make sure it's renewable. But this is a new mandate for the OEB. The OEB historically has been all about, let's not make any changes here, folks. Let's just sort of dial this down and, and be careful because, because all we want to do is make sure that the, the value or the cost of the product is the lowest. Well, that's out the window now. The OEB has a completely different set of missions, which is pretty exciting. Community ownership. You and we, we can own energy generation. It's a whole new set of business prospects. It's very exciting. There's no sense of big corporate monopoly now. It's, well, we, we hope anyway. We wait to see that, that that's what's intended to come about. And I think the, the signs are definitely there. And I'm actively involved um, in, in my work in making sure that individuals can have a stake in the energy market, an ownership stake in the energy market. It's pretty exciting. Environmental assessment's new. Environmental assessment has historically been the one of the biggest barriers to implementing renewable projects in not just Ontario, but North America wide. Uh, stakeholders come out of the trees. Stakeholders come from everywhere to say, you can't do this, you can't do that. Uh, it gets very political. Municipalities have had their issues with uh, the, the concept of renewable energies at their doorsteps within their municipal boundaries and abutting or just nearby. So municipalities have been part of the problem in terms of the, uh, the uh, opening the door to renewables. What's happened now is Ontario has said, let us put some order to this process and have a single point. So it's the in Ministry of Environment now uh, processes every renewable energy project through a set of, of filters in which they undertake to represent on an agency basis all the stakeholders who traditionally come independently to the process of review and scrutiny and dialogue about individual projects. So the Ministry of Environment has, in a sense, taken it upon itself to harmonize all of those principles and, and uh, representing them in, um, uh, w with due regard for their concerns. There's no question about that. And municipalities still today, if they have issues with projects, can, can state their concerns, but they must do it now directly to the ministry. Uh, so it's an exciting idea that it's, it's now a harmonized process. It's not exactly going to mean that projects are approved on a rubber stamp basis. We in the development side still foresee that there will be some considerable months before pro uh, projects are approved. Um, so it's, 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 a it's a better process. We wait the actual experience of it to know whether it turns out to be truly effective. Empowering the green economy. This is one of the key features of it. This act, the Green Energy Act, says fundamentally we want to have green outcomes. We want to get an economy that's, that's structured around having sustainable industries within our bounds. So much of what it's trying to do is foster the idea of energy entrepreneurship, not just from the point of view of generation, but also from the point of view of the chain of supply. Uh, both services and equipment, machinery, et cetera. So it's all about how can we make it happen here in Ontario and make it sustainable, not just from the, from the eco-sustainability point of view, but also is this business going to stay? Are these manufacturers and service providers, are they going to stay? Are they, do they have a chance to, to perpetuate their businesses over the decades to come? So the whole mix of regulation now has been restructured to look after the idea that we want a business here. We want a, uh, a new industry to make this um, 
something that we can, we can, if in fact we lose the heavy machinery industries and the traditional rust belt industries, if we lose them to foreign competitors or whatever, we'll still have built something new within this province. So that's pretty exciting.